I want to dovetail this against some of the more recent Google updates. And I'd love to hear your perspective on that. What we just saw happen with PRU pro or product review update and then the helpful content update algorithm and where you think the puck is going. I ran a case study. So as they were rolling out, as that was rolling out, I decided because Topic Ranker is a brand new domain. And so we have no authority in anything. I have no blog posts at all. So I threw up a blog post on there and the keyword I decided to go after was which keywords are best to target. And I have 300 search volume, 300 a month. And I was like, all right, you got DA 40 and 60 and 70 up there. My DA was nothing like zero. And I thought, can I rank there without any links just by creating the best piece of content that is like most helpful and start sharing it and improving it. And I got it to like the first page. Then I got like maybe three links to it and it popped to number one. But with Moz DA four or five, I was at number one. I still number one now. But what I was testing is like content itself, like how helpful is the content and how like how much of an intent is answered in the first, I don't know, minute of reading of the content. So I think like going forward, like you muscling your way up with links is not going to be the way things are going to be done anymore. Like it, it's going to be about how the content, like uh, topical depth and the content itself, how like truly comprehensive and helpful, I guess it is for people and how does it stand out from the rest. I have this trouble like with my customers now is that they, they all kind of want to rank for things that are already there. And I always say, hey, if you went to the like Supreme Court, how would you prove your case that you deserve to rank here for this keyword? And I think that's the mentality that people should have. So the helpful content update is a an interesting one also because it is a machine learning classifier of individual pages using a composite score of all these things, right? So it's using the user behavior. It's using characteristics it's gleaned from the site and it's classifying an individual page to say, this is helpful or it's not. And then it's collecting that amongst a site and saying, you have X amount of your content, absolute or X percentage of your content is low, it is not very helpful. And that can act as a weight on your entire site. So the reason why I bring that up is it's basically saying something you said before is to say one bad page, an entire section of bad pages, or an entire section of pages that aren't relevant to what you do, right, can actually drag down all the good stuff too. And it's the first yeah, time. Right. So I love your take on that. Yeah. Brian Dean got this right. He did every page is useful, highly valuable and well-maintained. So like websites with high amounts of unhelpful, con like websites with a bunch of article, like all those SaaS blogs with hundreds of useless pages. I just like go delete that shit. You, you know, I'm not leaving that alone. So two pieces of that. So every page being high quality and useful and having a purpose, nobody's going to debate that. That's obviously, but is that saying that you should be looking at one page, one word? as a target, or you should be looking at pages that rank for 7,000 words and not acting on them, which is where I'd say the person you referenced in there gets it wrong because you, you're so susceptible to risk. Somebody could publish content on a better intent, people like you who are analyzing the SERP and chop down the tree or chop down floor by floor of the skyscraper if you want to use that lingo. I want to go back to the, the pruning connection. So deleting what you don't think is on target for topically versus deleting low quality versus redirection versus repurposing. What's your take on that? You made a pretty blunt statement about deletion and I'm very passionate about deletion. Yeah. I usually I'm on the other side of the, uh, of the table because I believe no matter how ugly I can make it pretty, but what is your, what's your take on, on deletion as a process? Or a technique. Yeah, so I go through my, like my focus and then my thing is SEO, keyword research and PR. And so like on the Just Reach Out blog, I'm still involved with that team. Anything that is not around PR, like we've 
written about all sorts of stuff is a candidate for deletion unless they can be changed to be about PR easily or old content that is crappy. If it'll require us, let's say two grand or one grand to really change it into some type of really great piece of content, then maybe we'll and salvage it. Maybe we'll keep it. But honestly, most of the time we've been just, this is not performing. It is not really aligned with our topical depth or like our content focus. We should just take this out. Can we align it with something? Maybe. So we have a list of targets and we're like, okay, does this marry towards that? Great. Then we can go and go through the process of changing that. But we, it's old content, which has accumulated decent links. And we can marry it with a new intent or like a keyword that can actually, we have a weakness for, great. But if, if we just can't marry it to a specific keyword that has a problem or weakness on search results, we'll probably let it go. And if there's a lot of links to it, we might try and salvage it. We'll try hard to try and marry it into a content bucket that makes sense. This is a great question for us, Dimitri. Our previous keyword strategy had high search volume keywords with more commonly discussed topics amongst our prospects. We want to integrate this with more popular words from our previous strategy. What percentage of our blog should be catered to our new keywords with more popularity versus this new frontier with low volume? What do you, what's your take? How do you think about that? I think you, the topics that you were going for before and the topics you're going for now topically should be related. Like your topical depth profile should be re related. If we're going and we're doing like a 180 or a 360, like this is not a good thing. We should, but if it's in the same realm, you were just pivoting and saying, all right, we're going, we're, we're not targeting SaaS anymore. We're targeting startups or we're targeting different kind of startups. We're still in the startup space, still startup topics, then we're in a good spot. So that's like the first thing to just look at is, are we going to be building the same type of topical depth on the site? And what kind of topical depth does this site already have? How is it aligned with it? That's like the first thing I would look into before making these changes. And then going after low search volume versus high search volume, like, of course, like everybody wants the higher search volume. I would look for weaknesses and problems with that specific term. I wouldn't really qualify it based on how many searches it gets. Sure, that's a good thing to note is a factor, but for you to rank, Google doesn't really care too much. Like it cares what really matters in this whole thing, is there a problem or a weakness for the search result? And are you topically aligned to, do you have the topical depth authority to rank for it? And if there is a weakness or a problem with search result, like the ones we discussed, and you have the topical depth in that space and the expertise, then you probably qualify for it. One thing I'll key in on is the signals one gets when you do have a uh, title query to title mismatch or intent mismatch. So how do you think about that? Now, that's something that I think about a lot. It can be a signal of intent fracture. Google doesn't know which intent should service this. It can be a signal that there's a larger buyer journey required to be covered. How do you hone in on that with that? Just that one characteristic of query similarity to, to title sequences. We. So we, we have some AI that tries to extract meaning from the word that they put in into the search. And then from then on, our version one of the algorithm was literally just counting keywords. So anybody puts in like SMS, text, messaging, marketing examples, 2022, and any combination of those keywords should be in the title tag of the search result. If we cannot find all of those keywords, we used to flag it and be like, this is bad. It's a weakness. We realized that it's not so simple because it's just, what if 2022 is missing from there? Or what if SMS is missing from there? It's still text messaging, marketing examples that people are looking for. And so we started like writing logic into extracting meaning from the actual term and then grading how the mean, meaning 
fits with the meanings of the other, uh, other search results that are on the first page of Google. And if the meaning is 80 or 90% there, then we won't count that as a weakness. That extraction of the meaning is not an exact science. So we've been trying to perfect it in this second version that is out now that we have beta users using. I have about 15 people in there now that are putting stuff in and are testing it. What I'm finding is people are just like you and I talked about earlier, like they want to rank because of their ego. And that's such a widespread problem. <laughs> You're right. just, yeah, you're an expert, but your site isn't an expert in this thing. Like you haven't talked about it on your site in ages. I'd love to get your take right now on what are the signals that you're looking for in a search result or in a competitive landscape that may exhibit things that make it easier or harder for someone to approach that. And this is agnostic of their existing site, but just generally, what are some of those characteristics that you hone in on? So agnostic of the site, it's the first thing is their MozDA within the spread of what Mo MozDA ranks on the first page of Google. So if you're MozDA 10 and you're trying to rank for a keyword that has a bunch of MozDA 80 or 90, obviously you don't qualify. But that really stipulates on the topical depth analysis, of course, do you even qualify on the topic itself? But beyond that and beyond MozDA, which is the obvious one, we look at reading ease level and Google page speed insights as well. We look at number of mismatched keywords in the title tag on the search. So if somebody's searching for like strategy for keyword research 2022 and everything on the title tag that's ranking on the first SERP is doesn't include two or three title of those words, that's a weakness, right? If your content is old, more than six months, that's a weakness. If your content doesn't have at least a thousand to 2000 words in the article, that's a weakness. If your content loads more than three seconds, it takes for it to load. That's a weakness. And so we calculate these different weaknesses, like a forum site ranking on the SERP, like these little things, we catch them. And it's just search results analysis with a crawler that we build, but it tests things and it just tells you, hey, you should rank for this keyword, SMS text messaging, because a, you're an authority in it, but B, there's weaknesses and problems in the, on the search result for you. Like you should attack these, create a page that's longer, that's more recent, that loads faster, that has a better reading, eastness level.